diabetes, and carpal tunnel syndrome a challenging problem? Approximately 20% of people with diabetes will get carpal tunnel syndrome. Peripheral neuropathy makes the carpal tunnel syndrome worse. Some suggest that the nerve that already has established hypoxia caused by the diabetes is more vulnerable to local compression. Other mechanisms and explanations are also involved. So from the beginning, we'll have a difficult diagnosis. Some people believe that patients with diabetic neuropathy will have a high prevalence of carpal tunnel syndrome. The EMG and nerve studies, which is the electrodiagnostic test, cannot distinguish patients with clinical carpal tunnel from patients with diabetic polyneuropathy. Decision to treat this patient should be made independently of the electrodiagnostic findings because the electrodiagnostic discrimination of carpal tunnel from neuropathy is not very certain or clear. So we have difficulty in the diagnosis. We want to treat the patient, so we try to figure out what is the sugar. We may have difficulty in deciding if the sugar is controlled or not. Hemoglobin A1C, which is called the glycated hemoglobin test, is an important blood test that shows how well the diabetes is being controlled. It does provide an average of the blood sugar control over the last two to three months. The normal range for hemoglobin A1C is between 4 and 5.6. When the level is 6.5 or higher, it indicates diabetes. The goal of treatment of diabetes is to make sure the patient with diabetes have hemoglobin A1C less than 7%. The higher the hemoglobin A1c, the higher the risk of developing complications. People should have the test checked every three months to see if their blood sugar is being controlled or not. At least the test should be done twice a year. So as you can see that we have difficulty in diagnosis, we have difficulty in finding if the diabetes is controlled or not. And the last thing is, if I'm going to do surgery on that patient, would that patient have complication? The orthopedic surgeon don't know how to say no to patients, especially if the patient asks them for help. I identify four patients that could have complications in orthopedics. One, a diabetic. The second, is the obese patient. The third is the heavy smoker. The fourth are the patients that are on blood thinners. So these are the patients that can get complications. If the condition is acute or an emergency or urgent, we got to do the surgery. If the condition is elective, can wait, then we got to hit the pause button, sort things out, dig deeper, analyze the situation, and come up with a plan. So if the patient has a poor glycemic control, you probably will not want to do an elective surgery in that patient, like carpal tunnel release. But you could do an emergency surgery with the proper support from the medical team. But elective surgery can wait. High blood sugar is linked to increased wound complications after surgery. Nowadays, hemoglobin A1c is used to monitor the patients. And the higher preoperative hemoglobin A1c, the more risk factor for the surgical site infection. So elective surgery can be delayed until the hemoglobin A1c gets better. So joint replacement surgery, for example, is delayed until hemoglobin A1c 
is less than 7%. Because carpal tunnel is so common with diabetic patient that we got to sort things out in this condition. We got to know that they have better control for their diabetes. Yes, carpal tunnel surgery is a small surgery, but can have a catastrophic effect if we don't have good control of the diabetes. And the hemoglobin A1C will help us to monitor that patient. An elective surgery, such as carpal tunnel, if it is done with a high hemoglobin A1C, it can cause problems to the patient. It can cause complication, it can cause infection, that a high hemoglobin A1C is a true risk factor for infection postoperatively. An elective surgery should have been delayed until hemoglobin A1C is controlled from 10% to 7%, for example. Thank you very much for listening.